It was Canada Day recently, and uncharacteristically, many Canadians chose to reflect instead of party and wear orange t-shirts instead of red and white to recognize the tragic history of Canada's Indigenous relation. Listen to this first episode of Season 7 of Before, Behind, and Between to learn more. Canadians are gutted and heartbroken to learn of the roughly 1,600 mass or unmarked graves of Indigenous children, the remains of which have been discovered on at least four former sites of residential schools. Those numbers represent what we know so far. Not surprisingly, many people on social media have become self-appointed experts in the subject, with some directing others on perceived appropriate terminology and appropriate behavior. Others have become the cheerleaders and self-appointed captains of Team Sanctimonious. And an unfortunate number of people are pointing fingers, attempting to personify things. None of this is unexpected. However, what I would have hoped is that more people would have searched out the facts. Not the social media facts, but the minutes, the proceedings, the reports, studies, and recommendations from over the past many, many decades. While it's understandable in some ways to want to point fingers, the so-called social media and censoring of the past facts are heightening the industry of outrage and doing nothing to contribute to a more meaningful understanding. Of course, the unfortunate reality is that much of this information in all those studies, reports, and findings were produced and gathered prior to the advent of the Internet. So digital transformation is currently happening thanks to places like First Nations University, the University of Saskatchewan, and the University of Regina, to name a few. But there's still a long way to go. So it was in this context that a certain point was driven home to me, the fact that I once worked in what was called Aboriginal Affairs, a tenure that exceeded a decade, and a collection of experiences that included visits and relationships with dozens and dozens of communities. So I literally took myself before looking at things behind today's events and some sequences that happened between so-called ad colonial administration and today's governments. I decided to take some of that older material, publications from the early 1990s, at the height of the Oka Affair, on the heels of Meech Flake and Elijah Harper in the midst of the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples, and dust them off, consolidate them, and refresh them through a newly updated publication. That was a time when the aperture of hope and a willingness to understand and have dialogue was more pronounced than it had been in the previous 15, maybe even 20 years. It was a time that would cause many of today's social media warriors probably to cringe and cower. Terms like Indian, Native, and Aboriginal were the commonplace terminology used equally by Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians, both individually and organizationally. So two documents became a focus of mine, in 1992 and 1993 respectively. First, an academic thesis on what was at the time called Indian Policy and Canada's Indian Act, and a major research study for the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples. I've since digitized the files, modified and reformatted them, and consolidated them into a new and forthcoming book, Canada's Indian Act, Policy Perspectives from the Era, defined by Oka, Meech Lake, and the Royal Commission. The book will be a product of Henley Point, which you can visit and learn more about at henleypoint.ca, and will be available and priced as cheap as possible on Amazon. Or you can check out my website, stephenchristiansen.ca, for this and a whole lot of other information, as well as more episodes of Before, Behind, and Between. This podcast is available on all streaming platforms and podcast apps, including Anchor, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, and Google Podcasts. I'm Stephen Christensen. Thanks for listening. Production of Stephen Christensen.
podcast complete.